يعني be mindful of time I'm going to get uh, going here. Thank you so much for being a part of the MTC Virtual College Fair. We are happy to have you either live or watching this recording. If you're with us live, a few things that are important to note during this 45-minute presentation. Your microphone and your camera are off, so if you would like to ask a question during this 45-minute session, please use that Q&A button that's either at the top or bottom of your screen. The Q&A button at the top or the bottom. You can ask a question to one institution or all of them during this 45 minute session. Pay attention to the chat as these representatives will be putting some information that you may want to snag and to contact these folks after this presentation. Um, this is the last session for tonight, but a recording of this and all of the sessions in this MTC virtual college fair are available at strivescan.com forward slash mastery. I'll put this all in the chat as well. And we are going to kick it off with Sarah Lawrence College. Okay, thanks very much. Just give me one moment to get my slideshow going here. All right, and I've been told I have six minutes, so we're gonna move quickly. Um, Sarah Lawrence College is a private liberal arts college located in Bronxville, New York. We do offer both undergraduate and graduate programs, um, but we enroll about 1,400 undergraduates uh, from, you know, all over the country and uh, all over the world. Uh, we are primarily a residential campus with about 85% of students living in dorms for all four years. And our campus is located just outside of New York City. Again, the name of the town is Bronxville, uh, which sounds like it might be in New York City, like part of the Bronx. But um, in fact, uh, Bronxville is in southern Westchester County. To get to New York City from our campus, students can take the train, which is about a 35 to 40 minute ride. So that provides easy access to um, a number of internship opportunities, museums, Broadway shows. We really encourage students to take uh, advantage of their student discount um, as often as possible. Um, now, our liberal arts and sciences curriculum spans about 50 academic disciplines, uh, which are grouped into four areas of study. Something that's important to note about the academic program at Sarah Lawrence College is that um, we have an open curriculum, so students have complete freedom to move between the different academic areas throughout their four years. Rather than declaring a traditional major, each student works individually with a faculty advisor and designs their own program of study. That will often mean concentrating in two or more um, academic disciplines. Um, I'm often talking to students who are curious about a lot of different things, um, and aren't sure you know, what kind of major they're going to pursue in college. And a lot of those students um, are you know, speaking to a Sarah Lawrence rep like me because they have you know, recognized that Sarah Lawrence will give them the freedom to um, play a, an active role in shaping their own education um, rather than um, you know, pursuing a pre-designed major. Uh, because we have about 1400 students and um, roughly a nine to one student faculty ratio. Um, that also translates to small class sizes. Most of our classes are round table discussions capped at 15 students. The average class size is about 12. Um, part of the coursework at Sarah Lawrence, in addition to the round table discussion, in addition to weekly readings, in addition to a number of writing assignments throughout the semester, students also meet individually with the faculty member every other week. That is called a conference typically lasts about 30 minutes. For each course, the student will develop an independent project uh, that they carry out throughout the semester under the professor's supervision. Um, so our academic model um, really is a combination of the roundtable seminar and working individually with the professor for an independent project for that course. Um, so I'm gonna, just in, in interest of time, I'm gonna move a little bit forward here um, and talk about um, 
admissions. Uh, we do have some deadlines coming up, early decision and early action. If anyone has questions about those, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, but um, I do want to emphasize that our approach to admissions at Sarah Lawrence is very holistic. Um, which means that we look at every part of your application. Um, you know, we are not a college that only looks at your transcript and makes a decision on that basis. Um, you know, we have a number of optional supplements, um, including an artistic supplement, an essay supplement, um, and we are a test optional college. So you are not required to submit SAT or ACT scores unless you want to. Um, I know we have at least one other test optional college um, presenting tonight as well. Um, so maybe we'll hear more about that later. Um, also, just want to get the financial aid numbers up on the screen here. Um, we do, you know, fund students pretty robustly. Um, you know, uh, most of our financial aid budget goes to uh, need-based uh, financial aid, but we do also offer merit scholarships. Merit scholarships are awarded at the discretion of the admissions committee, um, but those are considered separately from uh, from from need-based financial aid. Um, I guess I have a little bit more time here. Um, I, I maybe just kind of backtracking a little bit. Um, just wanted to talk about some of the internship opportunities that, that students are able to pursue um, in New York City. Um, our internship program is coordinated primarily through the Career Services Office. This is a, a very abridged list of internships that students have pursued recently in New York City. Um, but as you can see, there's a pretty wide array of different industries represented there. Um, and through our practicum program, students can earn academic credit for internships, as well as be given a travel stipend that covers the cost of their uh, transportation to and from uh, any internship that they may be working at. Um, uh, I, I'm going to kind of wrap up and uh, I will put my contact information in the chat. Um, so if anyone would like to contact me later, happy to answer questions about admissions. Um, you know, I'm also happy to answer any questions, uh, you know, privately in the Q&A. If you'd like to ask anything, please go right ahead. All right, great. Next up, we have Eastern Washington University. Thank you. This is like a three-step process. Video, unmute, start the presentation. Here we go. Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer and I work at Eastern Washington University. And um, I first wanted to point out what you're looking at here on the screen is our online lookbook. So if you wanna grab that URL for future reference, I definitely won't have time in the six minutes that I have tonight to get through everything. So it's just a quick, easy reference if you want to go back and look at a few things. So just wanted to point that out before I get started. So to give you a quick overview, if you don't know anything about Eastern, uh, we are located in Cheney, Washington, and I don't expect you to know where that is, um, but we're just outside of the state's second largest city of Spokane, uh, just down the road, 20 minutes, very kind of small college town feel and um, pretty rural, as you can see in the video. And um, so a good feeling, great place to study, um, but just down the road from a large city. So we do have, you know, direct flights to and from. It's an important thing for parents to know probably is that we do have um, direct flights to cities all over the US. So it's really easy to get to. Um, in terms of size, we're a medium sized university with about 10,000 total students and 2000 total squirrels, if you're keeping track. Our campus stretches out over 300 acres. And what that actually means is you can get from one end of campus to the other in about 10 minutes or so. So it's not too big, not too small, kind of somewhere in between. So something that kind of sets Eastern apart is we really pride ourselves in our commitment to community and just ensuring that students are successful, not just inside the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. So anybody that you encounter from your admissions advisor to your graduation advisor is really going to be there for you and make sure that you're being um, your true authentic self and really learning about yourself and learning what you like and you don't like, um, again, both in and outside of the classroom. So that's something that we hear over and over is that Eastern um, really felt like a second home to people. And, um, you know, they felt it felt like a big family, I guess, while they were here. So something kind of kind of cool. Um, something that really I wanted to touch on, obviously, is going to be programs. Um, so prog programmatically, we have over 100 programs for you to choose from. So there's definitely going to be something 
for everyone here. I wanted to highlight a couple of unique programs at Eastern. Uh, for example, our forensic science program. It's pretty special because we have the Washington State Patrol Gr Crime Lab right on campus. And um, that means that our students have access to people who actually do this for a living. And so they can um, work on real forensics, real crimes, get their hands or their gloves a little dirty. And this tends to be the case for a lot of our health related majors, uh, where, for example, we have the only bachelor's program in Washington state that allows undergraduate students to work on real human cadavers. So a lot of hands on opportunities. Uh, I also wanted to highlight our cyber operations and cybersecurity programs. Um, whose students actually took first place at the National Cyber Games this year in Florida, and they beat out teams from all over the United States. So pretty high quality stuff. And then in addition to academics, there's obviously going to be tons of ways for you to get involved on campus, whether you're into sports, we're a division one school, um, whether that's sororities, fraternities, uh, clubs and organizations, there's just going to be tons of ways for you to meet people who are like minded and who are into the same things as you. So in terms of where you meet people, we have an award-winning recreation center complete with ice rink and a climbing wall. We have a brand new student union building with a multicultural center, pride center, disability support services, all the things. Um, so really no matter where you're at, we're going to um, meet you there. So like I mentioned before, Eastern is truly ideally located. Um, we're just down the road from a large city. So you've got kind of the rural and urban thing happening at the same time. So I really like it because, you know, in the same amount of time that I can be on my favorite hiking trail, I can also be at my favorite coffee shop, just kind of depending on my mood. So locationally, great fit. And then I also wanted to talk about value because obviously that's going to be important. In Washington state, we are the most affordable state institution of all the state schools. And so if you're in Washington state and you're looking for something affordable, it's definitely a great option. And for out-of-state students, we do have what's called the WUI program. If you are located in any of these states, there's a $15,000 scholarship that will automatically be awarded to you as long as you're admitted. So there's no true requirement. You just actually have to be admitted and that's it. It's super easy. And then I wanted to touch on uh, our requirements for mastery-based transcripts. So basically students with mastery-based transcripts, really all you need to do is submit the same materials as anybody else would. So an that means an application, a transcript, and an application fee, and that is it. We are test-free. We do not require SAT or ACTs. And to be admitted, you just have to have met expectations on the core coursework, and that's it. And so now that you know a little bit more about us, you can learn more here, you can come visit, you can request more information or just explore around. Um, and I think that's it for me. So thanks so much. Have a good night, everybody. All right, thank you. Next up we have Hampshire College. Hi folks, my name is Annie. I am the admissions counselor for Hampshire. Um, so, um, Hampshire is really devoted to what we call an open curriculum, individualized study. Um, we really want to know when a student is applying, when they're coming here, when they're meeting with an advisor, what do you feel passionate about? What motivates you? What makes you want to learn, regardless of whether it fits in some kind of predefined box or major? Um, so we have a self-defined uh, curriculum um, with no majors or departments, um, you're able to mix and match classes in whatever combination meets your needs and helps you follow your passions. Um, for grades, um, we don't use traditional letter grades, we use narrative evaluations. Um, so rather than getting an A or a B or a C that talks about, um, or that just says like you did a good job or you did a bad job, um, you really get substantive feedback, like a paragraph to a page um, in writing from your professor that talks about the work that you completed, um, where you started off, what you learned, what you struggled with, and how you overcame that, um, and sort of gives you advice for what next steps you can take. Um, narrative evaluations also often can kind of serve as a letter of rec, um, because your transcript will be people in whatever your sort of area of study or combination of areas of study are 
who have that expertise sort of attesting to like this student knows how to do publishable writing or this student knows how to do lab work um, and has proven that in their classes. Um, we also, because of that, are really open to non-traditional transcripts. So mastery, um, uh, mastery grading, um, homeschool students, anyone who sort of comes from a more alternative background, we're super open to. Um, we scaffold learning into what we call the divisional system. You can see it on the right of the slide. Um, so first year is what we call division one. And that's really just exploring lots of different things, things you really loved in high school, things you didn't get to do. Um, we don't have distribution requirements. Um, there's still an open curriculum first year, um, but you are really kind of just encouraged to try lots of things out. Um, second year, division two, also third year, is really when you start to hone that into your specific area of study, regardless of what it combines. Um, you will sort of narrow in on a handful of questions that you really want to answer, problems that you want to solve, things that you may want to do post-graduation. Um, and you'll pick your classes based off that, right? Like you'll work with a faculty advisor who um, will be like, okay, this is where you want to be when you graduate. What do we need to do to get you there? Whether it is classes, internships, independent studies, study abroad programs, field studies, um, volunteering, whatever it is. Um, and then finally, for your fourth year, Division Three, um, probably the most unique of the three, um, rather than taking a full sort of load of classes, you will create and design your own independent project that's the equivalent of six classes. So you're working on it almost full time for the entire year. Um, and that really puts everything that you've learned into practice. It's almost kind of like a master's thesis. Um, so that can be anything from, we had one student who did a, she was like a history and filmmaking student and she did a documentary on um, the feminist movement in Pakistan. Um, we have another student who studied um, design and specifically metalwork and medieval history. That student made a historically accurate, like full scale suit of armor. Um, my older sister, who was an alum, did a scientific study on how a species of nematode encodes memories and got it published in a scientific journal. Um, so students like mix and match lots of different things um, in order to follow their passions. Um, we are part of what's called the Five College Consortium. So that's a group of schools in Western Massachusetts. It includes us, Smith College, Amherst College, Mount Holyoke College, and UMass Amherst that are all located really close together. The furthest is like 15 minutes. There are free buses that get you to all the schools and we share almost all of our resources. So you are able to take classes without really any limits on the other campuses. Um, so if you wanna take gender studies at Smith or astronomy at Amherst, um, you have that option as a Hampshire student. Um, so even though we're a very small school, um, you really have this huge range of things that you can take and places you can go. You can also do things like clubs, accessing the other college libraries, um, really anything but competitive sports at the other campuses. Um, I will talk a little bit about admissions. Um, we have a really holistic admissions process. Um, we want to know what you're passionate about, what motivates you to learn, um, and it doesn't matter what box that fits into, right? We'll look at portfolios, um, writing can be really important for us, extracurriculars, um, whatever it is that sort of shows us what your passions are. Um, we are um, test-free, so we do not look at SAT or AC ACT scores at all. Um, and we really try to consider everything in context. So um, if a student sometimes like they'll have kind of a low GPA, but they'll really amaze us with an interview or an essay um, and we'll realize like, oh, this is a student who has maybe not been in the right environment to learn or there's stuff that's outside their control, but they are really passionate and eager to learn and in the right environment, they might really thrive. Um, so that's all information we really wanna have when we read a transcript um, and we don't really care what form that comes in. Um, is there anything else I wanna say? I guess just about the area, um, we are in kind of a rural area. We have a farm and a forest on campus. And a lot of our classes really use those as resources, right? So an environmental science class, you might like go do um, like field work on the campus forest from really early on in the class. Um, same with like animal behavior on the farm. Um, but we are pretty close to two kind of small college town downtown areas in Amherst and Northampton. Um, so if you want to like get coffee, um, buy a book, go shopping, whatever, the option is sort of there while still being in this very small, like quiet community. Um, 
I think that's pretty much everything. Any questions? They'd have to use the Q&A if they have questions. Okay, thank you. Next up, we have Loyola Marymount University. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. And it's a little low. I'm not sure if you can turn it up, but I can hear you. Okay. Is that better? Um, it's still just a little hard to hear you, but we can hear you. Okay. You just might have to speak up. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hi. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Hi, everyone. I'm with Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, California. Um, we are a part of the Jesuit network of colleges and universities, which spans about 500 years. The Jesuits focus on liberal arts, service action and justice, social justice initiatives. There are 180 Jesuit institutions worldwide, 26 in the United States. And Loyola Marymount has three tenets we feel like sets itself apart, being a Jesuit institution, being mid-sized, and then being located in Los Angeles. So we have three tenets to our mission, which overall is an education of the whole person. The first one is reflection and discernment through the encouragement of learning. We do this within a smaller classroom setting. Our average class size is 20. 80% of our classes have less than 30 students in them, and this really gives you an opportunity to take a deep dive, to get to know your classmates, have access to your professors as well. Care of personalis is a Latin term meaning care of the whole person, and I would say this would be, if we were to prioritize, be at the top of our list. We really pay attention to you as an individual, and I think if people were to describe us, they would describe us as a community and a caring community. And then magis is another Latin term, meaning uh, always striving to do and learn more. And we have facts in the corner. We're number four in the country for community service as well. Our students did over 200,000 hours of service this past year. We're a little over 7,100 undergraduate students. Um, and then moving on to our academic stru structure, we offer over 60 uh, majors and minors at LMU. We are also a national research institution. We have 17 research institutes on campus. Uh, undecided is a very popular major or non-major, and that's okay. You have advisors, professors who are going to help guide you through the process. Something else unique is that you have the ability to combine majors and, and programs. So we had one of our tour guides was physics and theater. We have incredibly robust theater programs, dance, music, uh, studio arts. Um, and then within our business program, we have some, um, some recent additions. We have four plus one programs now earning your undergraduate and master's in five years instead of six. We also just started a partnership with the Los Angeles Rams, uh, which is a football team in Los Angeles, creating a lot of opportunities, internship opportunities for our students. In addition, a School of Education, a world-renowned film and television program, a top-ranked program in the world, not just in the country, production, screenwriting, recording arts, animation, film and TV, media studies, and then a top-ranked College of Science and Engineering with four engineering programs, a growing program in environmental science, we're a very green school, by the way, as well as um, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, and health and human science. We have incredible acceptance rates into health professional pathway programs, medical, dental, occupational, physical therapy, veterinary, and dentistry as well. Very robust student experience, um, student life, over 200 campus organizations. We have two new residence halls. We're very much a residential community. Division one for sports and uh, over 100 study abroad experiences. So we've onboarded all of our study abroad programs again, summer, fall, and spring offerings. And we really think that being in Los Angeles gives you some amazing opportunities. We're a self-contained campus. We call our campus suburban urban. So we're self-contained, but in LA and very accessible to all it has to offer, close to the beach, 
as well. And we get the wheel spinning with regard to internship opportunities. So we work with 30, our 30,000 alumni in the Los Angeles area who represent just about everything possible. We're right up the hill from the tech hub in Los Angeles. It's within walking distance for our students, um, which is great being in LA. And just wanna mention some unique opportunities for students. We, we really focus on diversity initiatives across the board. We have incredible programming and resources for our students. Also disability support services, I wanna mention, we have seen an increase in students that might have learning differences. And I would encourage you wherever you go, uh, check to make sure if this might pertain to you uh, to see what services um, any college provides. So with regard to our application process, uh, we offer um, early decision, early action, early decision two and regular decision, um, or ED and EA already next week, November 1st deadlines. We are test optional. We use a common application as our primary platform. It's a very holistic review. So with regard specifically to the mastery transcript, um, as was mentioned, we also, we do a holistic review. We are aware of um, how the mastery transcript it works and um, are familiar in reviewing. We want you to feel confident um, in, in our review of, of uh, the transcript and that method. And um, activities, recommendations, um, and with regard to scholarships, all of our scholarships are four-year awards. You do not have to reapply for those. And with regard to financial aid, um, Things are changing a bit this year, uh, but we promise to keep in communication with you. We want everyone to submit the FAFSA. 87% of our students receive, receive financial aid. I would love to answer any questions that you have. Um, please put them in the chat. And I know we're gonna be doing a Q&A after this. I really appreciate your time. Here's our contact information. And I look forward to answering any more of your questions. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of Arizona. Just getting my PowerPoint set up here. All right. Well, thank you all for uh, attending this uh, presentation tonight. Truly appreciate it. My name is Justin. I am a regional recruiter with the University of Arizona. Um, so I'm going to share some more about the University of Arizona with you today. So University of Arizona is located in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we are the second largest city in the state of Arizona. There's about a million people that live in Tucson. And we're about 90 miles south of Phoenix. This is a beautiful picture of what Tucson looks like. Um, even though there are close to a million people in Tucson, Tucson still has a small town feel to it. Uh, Tucson is known for having some of the best food in the world. Uh, we've been voted the best 23 miles of Mexican food in the country. Um, and the United Nations has also designated Tucson as a UNESCO city of gastronomy, which basically means Tucson does a phenomenal job of incorporating its culture with its cuisine. Uh, so it's something we're very proud of. And if you're a foodie, um, you know, Tucson might be a really good fit for you. That's Tucson. Uh, you can see Tucson is situated in a valley uh, surrounded by mountains. There's one interstate that goes around the outskirts of Tucson, but the rest of the city is laid out on a grid of north, south, and east, west streets. Um, and believe it or not, sometimes during the winter, if the mountains get enough snow, you can even go skiing up there as well. So here's the University of Arizona at a glance. We are the state of Arizona's first university. We were established in 1885. We were actually a university before Arizona became a state. Our first graduating class was a whopping three students. Uh, we now have over 50,000 students. About 40,000 of those students are undergrads getting their first bachelor's, and about 11,000 students are grad and PhD students. Uh, the University of Arizona offers over 150 majors to choose from, so lots of variety for students. We are known for the sciences, technologies, engineering, um, we have a phenomenal school of business called the Eller College of Management as well, which we're known for, but we also have some of the most competitive fine arts programs in the country as well. Uh, our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one, and nine out of 10 students receive financial aid that come to the University of Arizona, and that's a, a statistic we're very proud of as well. 
One of the things I love about the University of Arizona is that our campus is one square mile. You can walk anywhere within 15, 20 minutes. You don't need a car if you come to the University of Arizona, which is very convenient for out-of-state students. Uh, that first building that you see in the, the foreground there, that's called Old Main. That was the very first building ever built on campus. It's where those first uh, graduating class of three held their classes. And you can see how much we've expanded over time since then. Um, but it's a beautiful campus. Everything you need is right there. Uh, all the dorms are on campus, the dining halls, restaurants, your classes, uh, a very convenient location for students. The University of Arizona is also a tier one research institution. Uh, we were the first um, school in the state of Arizona uh, to be invited to join the Association of American Universities as well. Uh, just to give you an idea of how much research we do, last year alone, we did over $760 million in research expenditures. That makes us a leader in research for the state of Arizona. And any student that comes to the University of Arizona has the opportunity to do research. So if research is part of your interest, University of Arizona might be a great fit for you. We're also very excited about our W.A. Frankie Honors College. Uh, this is for those students who are looking to add an extra layer of academic enrichment to their college experience. Uh, we just built brand new facilities for our honors students. We're calling it the Honors Village. Uh, it houses the students. It's also where all the honors courses are taught. Uh, beautiful uh, courtyard for the students as well. So again, if you're interested, that's a separate ap application after you've been admitted to the University of Arizona. We also have 23 different dorms on campus to choose from. Now, housing at the University of Arizona is not required. And because we don't require it, we cannot guarantee you a dorm. The way you ensure yourself a dorm is after you've been admitted to the University of Arizona, is you apply for housing. It's a separate application. Um, our dorms are usually full by April 1st, and that's the priority deadline to apply for housing. If you go to housing.arizona.edu, you can learn more about the different dorms that we do offer. We also have over 400 clubs and organizations to join if you're a student. Uh, one of the things we encourage students to do wherever they're coming from is to bring their passion with them and get involved. Uh, we have clubs in just about any area you can think of, from academics to political, cultural, pop culture, religious interest. We even have a phenomenal Greek life on campus as well. So how do you apply to the University of Arizona? We have our own application. We also accept the Common and the Coalition app. Whichever app you want to use, we're perfectly fine with. When you do apply, here's what we're going to evaluate you on. We want to make sure you meet the Arizona Board of Regents uh, core competencies. And that's what we call the Sweet 16. This is a list of what those 16 classes are when you do apply. And if you have at least a 3.0 in those, you're guaranteed admission to the University of Arizona. If you are looking for other scholarships, the University of Arizona has a very unique tool. It's called Scholarship Universe. After you've been admitted, you can log into Scholarship Universe and create a profile, and it filters through our entire database of scholarships. And there's millions of dollars in additional scholarships in this database. And it tells you what you qualify for and what the dollar amount is. Then you just got to go in and apply for those scholarships. So if you're trying to find a school that's a good financial fit, this is a great tool for those students. I know we are short on time, um, so I covered as much information as I could in those six minutes, but this is our contact information. Uh, seniors, you can apply any day and the deadline to apply is May 1st. If you're a junior, the first you can apply is July 1st before your senior year. Uh, thank you so much and look forward to seeing your application in the future. All right, thank you. If I could have everyone to uh, turn their camera on, we're going to go in the same order that you presented, uh, starting with Sarah Lawrence. If you could answer the question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, I, you know, my advice is always that students should try to seek out uh, colleges that feel like they are really a good fit for what they're looking for, rather than using external factors like rankings, uh, you know, to generate your college list. If you have the opportunity to visit campuses, that can be very helpful. Even if they're just local colleges that you, you know, may not already be interested in, you know, you can learn a lot that way. Um, visiting, you know, if you're able to do so is a good way to learn more in depth about colleges. But again, try to find, you know, ones that 
offer programs you're looking for, feel like, you know, there's a community that, uh, you know, would feel like a good home for you um, and, and try to find the best fit that way. Uh, I definitely second what Seth said about visiting campuses. Um, I think sometimes students have it in their minds that, you know, they have their mind like set on a particular college or a particular university, and then they go there and they're like, whoa, that wasn't the vibe. So definitely go check out um, campuses if you can. And then in addition to that, like, don't be afraid to utilize your resources. So um, we, we uh, everyone here are admissions advisors, and it is our job to help you through this process and make it easier. Um, so do not be hesitant to utilize your admissions advisors to help you along the way. It is very confusing. We know uh, it's overwhelming. And we are there to kind of help you make um, make it a little easier for you, hopefully. So, um, yeah. Okay. So big agree on utilizing your admissions counselors. Um, I talk to a lot of students who it seems like they kind of think they're like maybe taking up too much of my time, or like um, they're not supposed to ask me certain questions, and like like really the main thing that gets me out of bed to do this job is when a student feels like. I've helped them and supported them in some way and made this process like clearer, um, less scary, like just helped them kind of figure stuff out. Even if you're like not, like you're like, I have lots of questions, but I don't know if I want to go to your school. If at the end of the conversation, I've just helped you figure out what it was you, is you want, like regardless of what the conclusion is, that'll make me really happy. Um, so just that communication and like, especially smaller schools will really want to personalize the admissions process and really get to know you. Um, so it's totally okay to just ask lots of questions or just talk about your stuff um, and kind of brightens all of our days, I think. Um, and also like other resources, right? Like if you're like, I am really curious about this program out of school, like ask us to get you in touch with a faculty member or a current student or someone else on staff, like really try to like dig into these schools and get to know people and ask lots of different people questions and use us as a resource to connect with all of those different people. It's my turn, right? <laughs> um, I was I was just going to go off of what what each of them said, but kind of the opposite with regard to visiting campus. Um, we're still hanging on to virtual sessions. So, you know, we realize it's not easy to to jump on a plane and come and visit us. Uh, so, you know, check out virtual sessions. We have tours that are very individualized, you know, talking to a student, they're the stars of the show, you know, asking them, being able to ask them individually what it's like one on one on one a day in a life, you know, you want to know what it's like on a day to day basis to, you know, where you're where you're spending the next four years, um, the four years of your of your life. And then just to go off of what Annie said, you know, business at LMU is different from business at uh, at any one of these other colleges, you want to know the program you're applying to. So don't be afraid to, to contact um, that particular department or do research about that department. You want to know the program you're applying to. So virtual visits and um, really knowing the program you're applying to are my two bits of advice. I guess I would say a lot of what everyone else has said and um, some advice kind of to boil it down to three points would be you want to find a school that offers uh, a degree that you're interested in studying. That's kind of an important thing. Uh, you also want to find a school that's going to be a, a social environment fit for you as well. So I know a number of people have mentioned visiting campus. I would also encourage you to visit campus in person when there's actually students there. So you can see if it's you know, what you are actually looking for. We have 40,000 students on campus. So if you come when it's a holiday and there's nobody walking around, it's not quite as good of a deal as when all the students are there on campus. And then the third point I would be would say is, you know, research the, the finances. You want to find a school that's going to be a good financial fit for you as well. And there's lots of, you know, ways and people that can help you research the finances at each school. But it's definitely something you want to, you know, research as well. All right, all good advice. So we have time for another question. Um, and this one is one of my favorites. So let me share my screen. You're gonna go in the same order that you presented and you just answered. 
And it is going to be, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? And this can go in so many directions. It can be fun, it can be serious, but what is one thing you want folks to remember, starting with Sarah Lawrence? Um, you know, I think one of the main takeaways I try to emphasize is that um, every student at Sarah Lawrence um, plays an active role in designing their own program of study rather than declaring a traditional major. Um, so if you are a student who has uh, multiple interests that span different areas of study, um, or if you want to, you know, combine different, uh, you know, arts and academics, for example, um, you know, Sarah Lawrence might be a, a really good fit for you. Um, I think something that I hear over and over about Eastern Washington University is that people find who they are here. Um, so it's not, university just in general is not about getting a degree. It is about learning who you are and becoming like a person and becoming an adult, like a fully formed, sometimes fully formed adult. So um, that's one thing I would say as I think Eastern really does provide that opportunity for you to form um, not just academically, but socially and just um, as a human in general, so. Um, yeah, so the thing that I would say about Hampshire is to really be willing to make it your own. Um, you know, because of our open curriculum and because of the five college consortium where you have access to so many different um, classes, um, you really have a huge range of options for how you can combine things, how you can follow your interests, what your interests can be. Um, and we really encourage students to make it really hands-on, do internships, um, studies, write, whatever, um, put the things you're learning into practice. Um, so just take advantage of those resources in whatever form works the best for you um, and say like, okay, if this is where I wanna be in four years, even if that changes, which it will, um, regardless of what school you're at, like here are the steps that I can start taking. Um, and if it isn't obvious how you should do that or what program you should do it to, like talk to your advisor and find the path because there are very few rules here or in life that can't be bent in some way. Uh, I would, I would, um, as I mentioned in the presentation, describe um, describe LMU as a just as a very nurturing community, uh, filled with all of the resources and support um, in helping you discover um, who you are and the best you you can be as as an individual. And um, I think it's all there for the taking. I also think that, again, being in Los Angeles, where uh, you kind of have this ability to kind of try things out, there's a little bit of everything going on. So um, overall, I would just describe us as a very welcoming, um, fun, um, adventurous uh, community. I guess I would say the last thing I want you to remember about the University of Arizona is our motto and our battle cry, it's bear down. Now, some of you may be wondering, what does bear down mean? Well, a long time ago in 1926, um, the, the varsity football quarterback was tragically injured in a car accident. His coach visited him in the hospital and he asked John, is there anything you want me to tell the team? This was right before we're about to play our rival. John said, tell them, tell the team to bear down. Those were his last dying words. But that was the inspiring message the coach gave to our football team to will us to victory that day. And ever since then, bear down has been our battle. It's been, it's been our battle cry, our motto. It means never give up, keep fighting, persevere. When the challenges come and the challenges will come, we as Wildcats face the challenges head on and we bear down. All right, super interesting stuff from each of you um, and great advice. And my last plug will be to reach out to these folks. Uh, they're here to help you. Uh, they're here to guide you to the best uh, institution, the best fit for you. Um, so make sure you grab that information out of the chat or if you're watching this recording, go back, find it in the presentation. Um, if you're here with us live, just know that you can see all of these recordings, not just this session, but all of them from today at that uh, strivescan.com forward slash mastery. Um, I'm going to share my screen and wish you the best of luck. Um, 
Thank you so much to our presenters and giving us your time and sharing uh, in such short period of time how great your institution is and best of luck to everyone out there. Have a good night.